Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today, I'm going to be taking you guys through the latest on the sports card market. I'll be focusing mainly on the basketball market and the baseball market today. Not so much football since it's really in the off season, but with basketball being in the playoffs and MLB being in the middle of their season, figured it'd be worth a shot to look at the trends in both of their markets, kind of compare and contrast them a bit, and let you guys know how you can still make money in this market. But before we get into the video, please remember to hit that like button, consider subscribing to the channel, really means a lot to me, love all the engagement and all your guys' support on the channel. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Before we get into the market talk and the market analysis of this video, I did want to show you guys here on Card Ladder. it's this little promotion that they're doing, it's called Fantasy Collection. It's a little contest that they're running through the month of July. It's available for any Card Letter Pro members, but you don't have to necessarily buy the subscription right away. You do get a seven day free trial where you can try out all of the data analytics with Card Letter, and you can even participate in this challenge. If you go ahead and make a free account and you submit your collection in the next six days, probably the next five days by the time you watch this video. But the way it works is you get to submit and add cards into your collection. I'll go over to my collection right here. The upper limit is $10,000. That's the maximum card value of your collection. And you can add $10,000 worth of cards on Card Letters website into your collection. You title it Fantasy. And you basically just gotta add the cards to your collection that you think are gonna increase the most in the month of July. And the winner of that contest, whoever's collection rises the most by August 1st, is going to win a sealed 2019-2020 Basketball Prism Cello Box. It's valued right around $1,250 to $1,500, so an absolutely insane prize by Card Ladder. Awesome contest they're running. And second and third place winners will also get a year membership of Card Ladder Pro for free. And that's also going to be thrown in with a first place prize as well. So I wanted to take you guys through my collection, the cards that I think are gonna rise in value the most and give me the best chance to get that top spot. So starting off here, we have this Juan Soto Prospects Autographs Base, PSA 10. I went with this card because it's been down a lot in the past few weeks and a couple months here. So as you can see, I got in right around 45.50. The price when you add to your collection, the price that card is, that's what's going to lock in when you submit it into your collection. So I submitted this Juan Soto into my collection at $45.50. I figured I believe he's injured as of recently, so once he gets back 100%, and if he gets right back into form, then his card can go right back up to this $8,000, $9,000, even upwards of $10,000, which would be a huge increase for my collection. If this card doubles, then that's already $4,500 right into the profits, and that's only off of one card. So I suggest you guys look at some of those higher, higher priced cards, because those have the most potential in rising in value, and you want your collection portfolio to increase the most. Next card we got here is LeBron James Kaboom PSA 9. I try to go with cards that have a decent amount of sales in the past three to six months. So this card sold fairly consistently over the past couple weeks here. It's been three sales in the past month. All the way up here at $73.50. So if this card gets hot again, which Kaboom is a very desirable set, it's case hit in the Donruss set I believe. So if this card gets even back to the 5000 if we get a rebound from the previous sale at $25.50, then I can even double my money on that card. So I'm looking for cards that have high potential with very low population counts. This LeBron has only 33 in the PSA 9. This Juan Soto only has 216, which is very low for baseball pop reports. The next card I chose is Trey Young. I believe that Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks are going to go through to the NBA Finals and with the Finals being a little bit later in the year rather than a normal season and it ending in June, we could see Trey Young cards absolutely spike especially if the Atlanta Hawks go on to win the NBA Finals. With the Finals ending in mid to late July, 
his cards will have the potential to skyrocket right up until the end of July when this contest ends. So I went ahead and added this immaculate RPA out of 99. I, they only have it available in RAW, they don't have any data on the PSA 9 or PSA 10. Since it's already out of 99, you can assume the RAW pop report, if you will, is 99. And that's assuming none of them are graded. So $2,247 here. Even if it gets back to what it sold for a week ago, week and a half ago, then that's already a bunch of profit there again. $1,500 profit if it gets back up to the 4,000s. So moving on, we have Russell Wilson. I tried to go a little bit diverse. I tried to get at least one card from baseball, one card from basketball, and one card from football. That way I kind of diversify my portfolio a little bit. So I'm not all in on one sport in case that sports market in general goes down, kind of like basketball did in the past few months. And I went with Russell Wilson here just because it's pop 30, of course. And I think it's a little low here sitting at 635.50. Because if I go back to one year, his card spiked right before the season at 2275. So just taking a little bit of a risk at 635, it's sitting at less than 10% of my total value in the portfolio. So I figured I might as well take a chance if someone really likes Russell Wilson and this card pops up on eBay. Maybe they'll smash that buy it now button for a thousand or more, whatever it's listed at. So if we can get back to 1,000 to 1,500, that would be very ideal. And then since I had a little bit of cash left over, I just decided to add a random graded card from baseball. Figured this Christian Yelich would be pretty decent because in April, it peaked at about 90 bucks and got it for 1550 in my collection. So if he gets hot again, maybe you can go right back up to 50, 75 bucks. Nice little improvement won't really do too much to the total portfolio but i didn't want to waste the extra 15 dollars i had sitting in my collection because you can add up to ten thousand dollars so i didn't want to waste even a single dollar i believe all of this added up is right around 99.70 or 99.90 it's really close to ten thousand i couldn't really find any other combination of these cards or cards like these that gets me closer to that 10,000. I wanted to maximize getting that card from baseball, basketball, and football. So let me know what you guys decide to do with your collections. If you guys are going to sign up with Card Ladder, get that seven day free trial. I'd really appreciate it if you use my referral link. I'll show it right here. And I'll also have that in the description down below and in the comments. I would really appreciate it if you use my referral link if you're going to sign up for Card Ladder. Before we get into the market talk and the market analysis of this video, I did want to show you guys here on Card Ladder. It's this little promotion that they're doing. It's called Fantasy Collection. It's a little contest that they're running through the month of July. It's available for any Card Ladder Pro members, but you don't have to necessarily buy the subscription right away. You do get a seven day free trial where you can try out all of the data analytics with Card Ladder, and you can even participate in this challenge. If you go ahead and make a free account and you submit your collection in the next six days, probably the next five days by the time you watch this video, but the way it works is you get to submit and add cards into your collection. I'll go over to my collection right here. The upper limit is $10,000. That's the maximum card value of your collection and you can add ten thousand dollars worth of cards on card letters website into your collection you title it fantasy and you basically just gotta add the cards to your collection that you think are gonna increase the most in the month of july and the winner of that contest whoever's collection rises the most by august 1st is gonna win a sealed 2019 2020 basketball prism cello box it's valued right around $1,250 to $1,500, so an absolutely insane prize by Card Ladder. Awesome contest they're running, and second and third place winners will also get a year membership of Card Ladder Pro for free. And that's also going to be thrown in with a first place prize as well. So I wanted to take you guys through my collection, the cards that I think are going to rise in value the most and give me the best chance to get that top spot. So starting off here, we have this Juan Soto Prospects Autographs Base, PSA 10. I went with this card because it's been down a lot in the past few weeks and a couple months here. 
So as you can see, I got in right around 4550. The price when you add to your collection, the price that card is, that's what's gonna lock in when you submit it into your collection. So I submitted this Juan Soto into my collection at 4550. I figured I believe he's injured as of recently, so once he gets back 100%, and if he gets right back into form, then his card can go right back up to this $8,000, $9,000, even upwards of $10,000, which would be a huge increase for my collection. If this card doubles, then that's already $4,500 right into the profits, and that's only off of one card. So I suggest you guys look at some of those higher, higher priced cards because those have the most potential in rising in value and you want your collection portfolio to increase the most. Next card we got here is LeBron James Kaboom PSA 9. I try to go with cards that have a decent amount of sales in the past three to six months. So this card sold fairly consistently over the past couple weeks here. It's been three sales in the past month all the way up here at 7350 so if this card gets hot again which kaboom is a very desirable set it's case hit in the donruss set i believe so if this card gets even back to the 5000 if we get a rebound from the previous sale at 2550 then i can even double my money on that card so I'm looking for cards that have high potential with very low population counts. This LeBron has only 33 in the PSA 9. This Juan Soto only has 216, which is very low for baseball pop reports. The next card I chose is Trey Young. I believe that Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks are going to go through to the NBA Finals. And with the Finals being a little bit later in the year, rather than a normal season and it ending in June, we could see Trey Young cards absolutely spike, especially if the Atlanta Hawks go on to win the NBA Finals. With the Finals ending in mid to late July, his cards will have the potential to skyrocket right up until the end of July when this contest ends. So I went ahead and added this Immaculate RPA out of 99. I, they only have it available in RAW, they don't have any data on the PSA 9 or PSA 10. Since it's already out of 99, you can assume the RAW pop report, if you will, is 99, and that's assuming none of them are graded. So $2,247 here, even if it gets back to what it sold for a week ago, week and a half ago, then that's already a bunch of profit there again, $1,500 profit if it gets back up to the 4000s. So moving on, we have Russell Wilson. I tried to go a little bit diverse. I tried to get at least one card from baseball, one card from basketball, and one card from football. That way I kind of diversify my portfolio a little bit. So I'm not all in on one sport in case that sports market in general goes down, kind of like basketball did in the past few months. And I went with Russell Wilson here just because it's pop 30, of course. And I think it's a little low here sitting at 635.50. Because if I go back to one year, his card spiked right before the season at 2275. So just taking a little bit of a risk at 635, it's sitting at less than 10% of my total value in the portfolio. So I figured I might as well take a chance if someone really likes Russell Wilson and this card pops up on eBay. Maybe they'll smash that buy it now button for a thousand or more, whatever it's listed at. So if we can get back to 1000 to 1500 that would be very ideal. And then since I had a little bit of cash left over, I just decided to add a random graded card from baseball. Figure this Christian Yelich would be pretty decent because in April, it peaked at about 90 bucks and got it for 1550 in my collection. So if he gets hot again, maybe you can go right back up to 50, 75 bucks. Nice little improvement won't really do too much to the total portfolio but i didn't want to waste the extra 15 dollars i had sitting in my collection because you can add up to ten thousand dollars so i didn't want to waste even a single dollar i believe all of this added up is right around 99.70 or 99.90 it's really close to ten thousand i couldn't really find any other combination of these cards or cards like these that gets me closer to that 10,000. I wanted to maximize getting that card from baseball, basketball, and football. 
So let me know what you guys decide to do with your collections. If you guys are going to sign up with Card Ladder, get that seven day free trial. I'd really appreciate it if you use my referral link. I'll show it right here. And I'll also have that in the description down below and in the comments. I would really appreciate it if you use my referral link if you're going to sign up for Card Ladder. So now hopping into the market analysis and all of that of the video, I wanted to start off with Trey Young. Trey Young is a very interesting player. He's one of the top rookies in the past three years that is still left in the playoffs. We have this 2018 Panini Prism. Everyone knows that base Prism and just base cards in general have been sliding for the past few months. So even looking at this three month trend right here, you can see this gradual decline. That pop report is just way too high for any sort of sustainability. He bottomed out here at 227, but since Trey Young is absolutely killing it in the playoffs, nobody really thought that the Atlanta Hawks were going to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. You saw quite a bit of a jump here from that bottom out. Now when a card sells for this much lower than the last two, it is going to have a little bit of a bounce back. But even looking at about 260 to 275, where this one is, you can see that it even had about a $50 increase from there. So really good profit returns on this high of a card. Very good signs moving forward when players have crazy good performances. Their cards are still going to rise no matter what the pop report is, which is a very good sign. So I wanted to move on to other cards of Trey Young and look at them. I chose a lot lower pop reports because pop reports are very, very important moving forward when looking to make money with any investments. So this Hyper Prism PSA 9 only has a pop of 195, a lot, lot lower than that base prism sitting at almost 10,000. And as you can see here, peaked at about late March, early April and started to slide down a little bit but it still, still held kind of steady from about April 21st to up until now. It might have saw a little bit more of a decline if the Atlanta Hawks were out of the playoffs right now. But then again, just looking at this pop report right here, if you look at this 355 sale in January, if you draw just about a straight line across, you only have a gradual decrease, very minimal decrease at all, just because of that low pop report. Lower pop cards are going to have a lot more sustainability than the base cards that have stupid high pop reports. When that population number is really high, it's going to take that much more demand to cause any price increases. And also vice versa, when you have a low supply, it's going to take a lot little of or a lot less demand for cards to increase. So just because there's not much demand on this card, there's not much out there anyways. So not many people are selling this card. So there's less opportunity for that card to decrease. Looking at another Trey Young card, took another PSA 9. A little bit of a higher pop report on this card, about 1500. But Optic Shock is a very good set to look at, very good parallel and Optic. And as you can see here, it started to decline after people thought that the Hawks might have been out of the playoffs. It went all the way down to $90 after seeing 130 but once the Hawks made it to the Eastern Conference Finals and while they pushed through in Philadelphia, you see this increase right here back up to 137 So very good trend, exactly what you want to see from the lower pop cards. $117 back in March, $130, $137 in June. So very good sustainability on this card right here. Much better than the base cards out there. So moving on to Zion Williamson. Zion's a bit of an interesting card to look at. Or any of his cards are just pretty interesting to look at. Mainly because he's already been out of the playoffs for about a month to a month and a half or so. But you can still find cards that are increasing over monthly changes. With Card Letter Pro, you can sort by weekly changes, monthly changes, or even daily changes. So I have the monthly changes right here since he's been out of the playoffs for about a month or so. And as you can see here, this purple BGS 9.5 pop of 178, very low pop report, love to see that. Bottomed out here at about 160 to 175 at the end of May. And as you can see here, just a steady increase. Zion's still going to be a really popular player going into next season. So people are going to want to buy up his lower pop stuff. 
low population stuff is the hotness right now. Everyone's moving off of base. Nobody really wants base anymore. So anything with a population count of 500 or under for basketball is really, really nice, especially for the popular players. Any parallels and gem mints of those cards are still going to be very sought after, as you can see here. And there's still plenty of other examples where the monthly change is anywhere from 25% all the way up to 87% for this purple optic. So very nice returns on a lot of these cards. So there's still lots of opportunity in this market, even though the base and high population cards are sliding. Switching over to the baseball market, I wanted to look at Vlad Guerrero Jr. cards. Vlad Guerrero Jr. is having an absolutely insane MLB season so far. He's leading the league in home runs. His on-base percentage is through the roof. He's just having an absolutely awesome season in terms of offense. So I wanted to look at a few of his cards and compare the population reports to how his cards have increased. And as you can see here, over the past six months, baseball cards did see quite a bit of an increase going into the season. Season started right around the beginning of April. So just like NBA and NFL cards, they saw a rise right into the season. Nothing out of the ordinary here, but instead of declining like a lot of the other cards in basketball and football, Vlad Guerrero just started killing it right off the bat. Had a little bit of a decline from April 28th to about May 11th, two week period. It's probably a little bit slow right here, but ever since then, his cards have just been on the rise. And he's even up to $520 there. His first Bowman Chrome PSA 10 sitting right at $500. Absolutely crazy, especially when his cards were about $150 at the end of 2020 just crazy growth there his pop report 2747 that's that's okay for baseball baseball is usually printed a lot more than the other sports so you're gonna see higher population counts but even at 2750 for his psa 10 and his bowman first chrome very basic card sort of a base card but a chrome card is a lot more sought after than the paper. It's going to be worth a lot more. So even his base chrome card has just seen absolutely awesome returns, which is a very good sign for the sports card market moving forward. Taking a look at some of his other cards, we have his Prism Refractor in a BGS 9.5. Very, very different pop count. We have 32 here. Just another example of very low pop cards, just having awesome increases. So he held pretty steady for April into May at 250, and he even dropped down to 141. A lot of people prefer PSA over BGS, but somebody, somebody ended up bidding this card up as recently as a week ago, up to $762. Now, even though this might seem a bit out of the ordinary there was about two three weeks in between sales and because there's a pop report of 32 or pop count of 32 for this card you're not going to see this card on auction very much so just because he's been killing it everyone wants vlad guerrero jr cards every baseball collector is very very after vlad guerrero jr right now so it's very easy for five to ten people to get into a bidding war and that's why you see this huge increase right here for this Prism Refractor BGS 9.5. And looking here at his Prism Refractor PSA 10, again, very low pop count, 246. PSA is going to have more pop counts than BGS just because more people submit to PSA. PSA 10s are basically the gold standard of gem mint cards. So looking here, there's a lot more sales of this card than the BGS 9.5 purely because it has almost a three times higher pop count but sometimes you don't really want too low of a pop count just because it's harder to comp the card and it can be harder to find people that are interested in the card so pop counts anywhere below 500 and sometimes above 100 is right in that sweet spot where, where you'll have a lot of sales and a lot more people will be interested in that card just because you won't have only collectors interested in it, you also have investors looking for quick flips. So as you can see here, 
about $400 for the card right around the time the BGS 9.5 was sitting at 250 so fairly decent margins fairly expected for 9.5 to 10 but as you can see here going to June his cards just skyrocketed in the past week week and a half as he continues to lead the MLB and home runs and just absolutely killing it almost every at bat even up here at one thousand dollars we can click view all sales that was a best offer but if you get somebody antsy enough and it's the only one on ebay then you can get lucky enough and somebody will offer just insane amounts of money for highly sought after cards so that's going to wrap up the video for today just wanted to take you guys through a little bit of an analysis of the current basketball market and comparing it a bit to the baseball market i know i only chose one baseball player and he's the hottest baseball player right now in terms of card values but just to show you guys that the sports card market isn't really going anywhere anytime soon everyone's afraid of this crash or this correction all these terms being thrown out there the sports card market is going to be just fine it just happens that a lot of the base is on a decline it's because most of the people that got into this hobby in january and february just saw everything everything moving up and everything increasing in value two three five ten times value and they were just buying up everything without really researching and nobody really cared about pop reports but once everyone got in and got a little bit over leveraged everyone had all these cards and very little cash so the buying season kind of stopped after february and everyone was kind of stuck with these base cards with nobody really wanting to buy them because it was on a decline and that's what you're continuing to see pop counts are very very important for investment and if you're a collector you really like the rare cards then pop counts are going to be important for you guys as well so i think low pop cards are the key moving forward if you're strictly looking to make money and if you're a collector then you don't really care about pop counts you just care about what you like if you like the base card design it's a classic design then you must be very happy with the base card market kind of crashing here it's probably crashed about 75 percent from february then much more affordable for the collectors out there but as investors base cards are not it right now you definitely don't want to be holding on to base cards which kind of sucks for myself because i do have about 10 to 15 different graded base cards which i really don't care about too much because i'm not in this hobby for making money i just really like the designs and the looks of a lot of these cards and i was happy to hold the cards even if they went down in price just because i like the looks of all of them but anyways that's going to do it for the video please remember to hit that like button but anyways, that's going to do it for the video. Please remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel for future sports card content. And anyways, I'm out. Perfect. Perfect.